What's up YouTube, this is Sean from Flyland Jeeper, here again with some more maintenance videos on some Jeeps, um, as well as working on my own projects and keeping my own vehicles running. I also get to take care of my friends and family, um, because I'm that guy that knows something about mechanics. So, today we're going to be going over my mom's 96 XJ. Um, she needs new shocks and had a brake line bust. So. We'll be going over some basic stuff like that. Um, we'll probably break this up into a couple different videos, but uh, we'll get started on the shocks since they're the easy part and go from there. All right, so first things first, um, sorry about the bad lighting in this corner part of my garage isn't that lit very well. Um, it's about 30 degrees out, so I got a couple different brick heaters running. So if there's background noise, that's why. Uh, first things first, we're doing front shocks on a Cherokee XJ. Jack it up on the front and uh, check your owner manual for that and see what you where you need to lift it and all that good stuff. Next part, look at your wheel. If you got one of these good guys, wheel lock, wheel, locking wheel lug nut or whatever you want to call it, um, you need the key. So make sure you have the key before you start this project, otherwise it just makes you frustrated. With these. You gotta make sure that you line it up before you start doing anything with it because otherwise you will strip that out. See how that's seated in there? Um, now the recommendation is to not use an impact on these and to just use a normal uh, breaker bar, but as long as you're careful and don't go full on on it, you should be good. But uh, we'll get the wheel off and go from there. All right, we got the wheel off and we're doing shocks. This guy here, this guy here. They should be 13 millimeter, I believe, on both sides, bolt and nut. Uh, so you want to soak those down, and then up top goes through the end of the engine bay. And on the driver's side, you have the fun of contending. Let's see if it'll focus that guy down there. Um, dealing with all the brake lines and everything else going on. Um, so you're going to have to have some fun with that. Usually a flex wrench, um, a ratcheting flex head box wrench will get down in there pretty good, um, at least to start. But this looks like it's not super tall, so I might be able to use a socket to get under there. Um, but there's some other bracketry and stuff for the brakes that I got to deal with. On the, dry, on the passenger side, it's fairly straightforward. <clears throat> or on the older ones it is but you got it right there you should be able to hit that just move some stuff around um, and you should be good to go so anyways we'll get going on this soak everything down and uh, get going with it all right so as you can see I got a little stubby wrench in there actually the way the brake lines are run and Everything seems to be lining up. Um, it broke free pretty easily. I did have a flex head 14 millimeter. Um, you could use 916, but 14 fit a little bit better. Um, broke it free, and then now I'm using a little stubby just to get a little more swing out of it. So, and it's pretty free now, or I should be able to pop it off with my fingers. So, we'll keep going, get the tops. I usually like to do the, the tops first, excuse me. Um, just because it helps, I don't know, sometimes it just seems like they're a little bit easier to get undone if uh, you run into problems with loosening this nut, um, if the bottom is still attached. And one thing too, if you have the car jacked up, I like to do this this way. I like to have the car jacked up and supported by the unibody frame rails or the frame like this, and then I let the axle droop as far as it can so that it gives me the most room in there to work. Now, the problem with that is that your shocks are what limit the droop of your axle. So if you undo this top nut and you don't have the axle supported, the axle is gonna start falling and basically droop out on that one side. So what I do is I just take the floor jack, just pump it up a little bit, give it some support so it doesn't go anywhere. It still gives me more room to work than normal if I was just supporting it by or jacking using the jack stands on the axle itself. So uh, we'll keep going and I'll give you any other updates as we go. 
<clears throat> all right here we go old one and the new one so um came out pretty fine everything looked pretty good on it um as you can see under here there's a lot of rust it's an old car 96 um i think it's been most of its life probably in nebraska and uh, my mom primarily uses it just for winter driving um when the roads get really super shitty um so with that being said old shock out new shock ready to go in um these straps help keep the shock compressed give you a little bit more room in there usually what i'll do is i'll attach the bottom and then cut the top and then just kind of guide it in place um as it expands so these here so everybody knows these little pieces going through the bottom of the shock those are called bar pins um, so if you're looking to modify your Cherokee, your XJ, and see something called a bar pin eliminator kit, what that does is it gets rid of this piece. So when you put the shock in, basically the, the adapter bracket will bolt into here, and then it allows you to use a straight bolt um, through instead of the bar pin and the two separate bolts. Um, they're a little nicer. They do give you a little bit more axle travel, like a touch more, because you're only basically raising the shock up about, uh, you know, maybe an inch or so uh, just to get rid of that bar pin. Um, it does make it a little bit easier for aftermarket shocks. Um, if you're looking for, if you have a lift and everything, doing aftermarket shocks, it makes it a little bit easier to find shocks that will fit um, because they don't come with the bar pins from the factory. And I've put in enough of those, they kind of suck to put in. Um, so anyways, we're gonna get this put back in the front shocks um, there's the two bolts I do recommend putting some anti-seize on these um, it just helps you the next time you have to take something apart the more anti-seize you use now there are some things you don't want to use anti-seize oh my light just died uh, you don't want to use anti-seize on like studs lug nut studs don't use anti-seize on these these are the one pieces on the truck I can think of that you do not want these backing off um, so it drives me crazy. I actually worked at Walmart part-time just to make some extra money when my wife was pregnant. Um, to, uh, their policies to put anti-seize on these studs and I never did it. I told them flat out. I told my manager, I just said, nope, ain't doing it. Um, that's a huge safety risk in my opinion and I'm not doing it. And if you don't want me to not do it, then fire me. And, um, they didn't. So I was just like, nope, ain't doing it because that's, like I said, a huge safety concern to me. But anyways, so we'll get these put back in. I'll change the battery in my light so it'll keep showing in some light and we'll keep going. All right, so here's the shock placed in there just so everybody can see what I'm talking about. That's how much room I got to go. And we will just snip this guy real quick. slowly 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 expanding there my arm out of the way so but that's good that's what you want a shock to do so the stem is up through the hole there so I'm just gonna let it do its thing and focus on the bottom okay going back in Got the wrench there. I did remove the end up removing the air box. Um, it does make it just a touch easier to um, tighten this down. So it's just a, a 13 millimeter nut right here and then two 13 millimeter bolts. Um, you might want to make sure to hit those with rust penetrant, uh, loosen them up. But this one is inside the box, so it came out pretty easily. Um, so we're going back together and um, we'll uh, keep going. We're almost done. So with these, you don't, they don't have to be super tight. Basically, all you need to do is actually just support the axle up a little bit so that you're actually putting pressure on the bushings uh, from the underside. And then just tighten it down until you start to see the bushing spread a little bit. Um, like I said, don't have to be like ooga dooga tight or anything like that. Just um, snug them up. Uh, some, will actually bottom out the threads 
but other ones don't. So you just need to, like I said, either bottom out the threads uh, like I did on my YJ or um, just get it to where the uh, bushing starts to expand a little bit and you put some compression on it. All right, guys, there you go. So that's how you do the uh, front shocks on pretty much anything. I think it's, I can't remember. I think it's like 83, 85, 86, something like that, all the way up to uh, the last year that they made the XJ, like in the mid, early 2000s, uh, front shocks at least that are stock. So if you have aftermarket axles, suspension parts, it's a whole different ball game, but that's pretty much how you do it for a stock XJ. So um, wheels are back on. We're gonna drop it down, torque the lug nuts and then move to the back, which is where the shit usually happens. So sorry for my language today. It's kind of one of those days, but um, hopefully we can get all the um, bolts undone without breaking anything off and having to tap and die and do zerts and all that stupid shit. So, um, so the, the back is the problem with these is that they just rust out completely. And unless you use anti-seize, you have a long, hard road in front of you to replace the shocks um, but also the bar pin eliminators also help with that so uh, you can put those in leave them forget about it and then all you have to worry about is the one through bolt instead of the bar pins the rears have the bar pins as well um, but uh, we'll get going on the rears and so, got the rear end jacked up now I don't recommend having it I can give you guys a shot here in the garage having it that much of an angle um, just because the jack stands are you know trying to hold something at an angle like this when they're vertical make sure you chalk block these wheels um, because once you start lifting it up it's going to roll at that much of an angle you are going to have this jeep that wants to roll away from you so i've got chalk blocks on both sides um, of the front wheel here to keep it from going anywhere and before when you start dropping it down um let the jack stands take some of the weight and then i jiggle the shit out of this thing um grab it by the back give it a shove front and back and also go side to side just to make sure it ain't gonna go nowhere um because that's the last thing you want is something to drop on you especially from that height probably wouldn't feel that good um and check your jack stands down below. Make sure they're all four feet are flat against the ground, and then you should be pretty good. These are six ton jack stands. Um, ever since I had the Harbor Freight ones, they've been great for me. Um, ever since Harbor Freight put out that recall, um, I've not been able to find a set of, another set of uh, six ton jack stands. So I've been just making do with two at a time. So as you can probably see, all this goodness is brake fluid. So we're gonna have to zip off that wheel um, and try to do the brakes. But like I said, that's a different video. We're gonna focus on shocks. Um, you see shocks are pretty rusted as well. The one on this side is actually, you can't see it very well because I don't have any lights set up yet. See how it's all oil coated? That's uh, a good sign that you got a blown shock. So. Um, we're gonna swap those out and get this taken care of. All right, so here we are underneath the Jeep. Nice thing is, is that these are just studs here. So just take this nut off, ah, um, and you should be able to pull the back off, the bottom at least. The top is where it gets interesting. So, Let's see if I can get a shot here. I don't know what's going on up here. Those look like machine screws. So I don't know how much of a shit show this is gonna be. Cause see the slot in the head? I don't know what's going on. Um, over here, let's see. That's what they normally look like. Um, they should just be 13 millimeter bolts again. But the problem is, is that they go through this cross member here. Um, they're just threaded into the cross member. I'm upside down right now, but all a bunch of crap gets caught up in here. Just rust these out completely. And then you're stuck with doing a whole bunch of heat and drilling and a whole bunch of fun stuff right next to the goddamn fuel tank. So um, 
Yeah, she also needs some bump stops. Those are not good. Um, also, there's your fuel filter if you're wondering. And so I'm gonna so soak everything down as best I can and hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get these out. So we shall see. And I'm gonna have to talk to my mom about washing her Jeep more often. Um, this kind of rust is attributed to just lack of washing it. Um, especially in the salt belt where we are, you get the salt on here, it, it builds up, it causes corrosion. If you live in the salt belt, the first nice day it's above 30 degrees, you need to wash your car. Or if you have a heated garage or just an attached garage to your house, you should be washing your car anytime it's close to 30 degrees and then store it inside so the doors don't freeze. But um, yeah, so, and there's the fun leaking brake line that, uh, yeah, another video. Anyways, so, here we go. We shall see what happens. All right, so I lucked out on the first one, got both the bolts out. So there's the old shock uh, for the driver's side. See the bar pin up there? So the rears are a little different than the fronts where the bar pin is open on the back. Um, that's kind of nice because if you're just replacing them and you can get them basically loose, you can almost wiggle it out without having to take the bolts all the way out now, or just have to take one of them out. So, so if like one gets seized in there and you can back it out just a little bit and then um, get the other one out all the way, you can actually fish it out without having to screw with the other bolt. But what I did was I took both of them out just cause I wanted to see what was going on. Um, it kind of looks like, I don't know if I did this, or if we've even replaced the shocks since we, my mom bought this car. Um, she's had it for like five or six years. Um, but they used like some self tappers. You can see the little slot in the thread there. That's a self tapping bolt, um, which is why they have that machine screwdriver slot in it or machine slot in it. Um, so we will anti-seize the shit out of these, um, run them in, and then run them back out on the threads. Now you don't need to go crazy on these. Let's see how small these are. They're 13 millimeter head on them. They're tiny bolts. You don't have to go fucking all hooga hooga dooga dooga booga dooga booga waga on the impact or even with your hand wrench. Um, so you just gotta get it tight. If you snap one of these off, you're gonna be really mad at yourself and have a really, really bad and frustrating day. Especially if you're doing this in your garage and you don't have a lift. So. Uh, same thing as before with the front, unbolted the bottom, kind of supported it with the jack stand, or the floor jack, sorry, um, so I was able to get that out. Plus, not having all the weight of the axle pulling down on this probably helped get the threads out. So, like I said, I'm going to spray some rust penetrant up in the threads, uh, run these in and out real quick on there, and then um, get the new one back in. And then we'll try out the uh, passenger side, and... Hopefully go two for two. Well, it looks like, guys, the uh, vehicle gods were not looking to smile upon me completely today. I guess one out of four ain't bad, but as you can see, this is a factory bolt. This is one of those self-tappers again. So um, I'm gonna see if I have one of these or maybe go to the parts store, hardware store, see if I can find one that matches. Um, Cause it looks kind of like they just drilled this one out a little bit and uh, just ran one in. So we'll uh, see how it goes. But I did get the shock off. It's just now a matter of fixing this so that we can get that in there. So um, the joy of working on these Cherokees, like I said, the only thing you can really do to prevent this from happening is to get a bar pin eliminator kit. Um, you can then pull the bar pins out of the shocks when you get them. Um, you basically just clamp it in a uh, vise and then just leverage them off. Use a lot of pen uh, lubricant. Um, yeah, so kind of sucks that that happened, but basically I was just working them back and forth to try and break them free. So I just, I wasn't laying on this trigger going, I was going bop, 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 reverse it, bop, 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 bop. 
reverse it, bop, 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 bop. And then uh, one finally broke free. And then funny enough, once this one broke, this one came free. So, you know, it's the shit that happens. So we'll, um, we'll see what we can do here and um, see if I can find a bolt like this and go from there. Oh yeah, this is what we are dealing with now. Um, so I tried, like I said, we had the bolt, one bolt break off. You know, if that's all that breaks, I'm gonna be super happy. So, um, I tried using a left-handed drill bit, drilled it out, tried to use a extractor, totally not happening. So at that point, everything seized in there. It's almost as if it's all one piece. So I just took a drill bit and uh, stepped up the drilling out to quarter inch. Uh, the bolts that are in there are 5 16 by 18 threads. So I'm using the same size tap and I'm just gonna go get a new bolt. Um, so far, everything seems to be cleaning out pretty well. Um, big thing with this is that uh, with any tiny tap, you turn it, and when you start to feel some resistance like that, you want to back it off. Um, it, this is a long process. You don't want to go too fast because you're going to end up breaking. If you break off this tap, you are totally screwed because those things are super hard and you're not going to be able to get it out. So like now, I'm starting to feel some decent resistance. So I stop, put it in reverse, back it out. And if you, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, there's a bunch of little metal shards that are falling out. That's what these little channels and the flutes in this thing are for, is to let the metal pieces fall out as you're cutting threads. Um, then you put it back into forward, go a little bit more. And you feel it kind of get tight. And then I think the recommended is like one turn, and then you back turn it a quarter. Um, this is a standard. So this is a long process. It takes a while to get it done, but take your time, um, go through the steps, and um, it'll save yourself a lot of headache. Because like I said, I've had these break off, and then at that point you are pulling out the welder. Um, it ain't gonna happen. So, um, I'll probably have a video on how to do tap and die um, at some point here, but, go now I'm gonna turn off the camera for a sec get this finished and uh, then get back with you guys all right so here we are you can see all the brand new threads right in there I did run the die or tap through that hole as well so the threads should be all clean um, so basically what I did was I tried using left-handed drill bits to heat it up and hopefully pull it out but no dice, um, used an auto punch right in the center, started drilling, drilled up to a quarter inch drill bit uh, all the way through. And then I took a 5 16, five sixteenths by 18 coarse thread um, tap and then ran the threads because that's what actually I matched was in that hole and the bolts and all that. So now all the bolts are the same. Um, and the same thread. So now I went to the hardware store and got myself a new bolt and we're gonna anti-seize the crap out of it and throw it in. Um, so I went with grade eight just because the shouldered bolts at the parts store, at the hardware store that I could find were all grade eight. So I went with grade eight, they're cheaper to do this. Um, actually, I go to uh, local bomb guards, uh, not a, plug for them or anything but they charge the, my local one at least charges by the pound for grade eight and grade five basic hardware so um a couple of bolts only cost me like a dollar uh compared to like a parts store or a big box store where they sell them a dollar a piece or something like that so um i got some extra ones because i think i'm gonna need to replace these bump stops and these look like about the same size bolts so figured what the hell grab a couple extra and now we will just test fit real quick and yep she's in there so now we'll get this last shock in and call her a day <laughs> 